Now, it uh, gives me great pleasure at this point to introduce Mr. Philip Yeo as our keynote speaker. There is no better person, in my view, to reflect the combination of vision and practicality that's needed to create a new economic community based on science and technology. Singapore, as we've discussed, is one of the dominant R&D communities in the world, and Philip Yeo is one of the dominant figures in making this possible. Very importantly, Philip Yeo does not stand still. As the scientific and economic situation changes, it is essential to continuously change the R&D cluster model to meet the current realities. And in this, Philip Yeo is unequaled. Philip Yeo is currently the Special Advisor for Economic Development to the Singapore Prime Minister's Office and the Chairman of Spring Singapore, the government agency with the mission of developing local enterprises in Singapore. Previously, he was Chairman of the Agency for Science, Technology and Research, also known as ASTAR, and Senior Advisor for Science and Technology. Mr. Yeo has received numerous international awards and honorary degrees for his public service and promotion of bilateral co cooperation in science and technology, including the Order of the Rising Sun Gold and Silver Star from the Japanese government in 2007 for his significant contributions in promoting economic relations and scientific and technological cooperation between Japan and Sing Singapore. Please join me in welcoming Philip Yeo. Senior Vice Minister, uh, Governor, Ambassador, Dr. Dolphin, Dr. Botman, it's a great honor for me to be here. In 2001, I was in Vicini Brenner in Tokyo with the Governor of Okinawa then and uh, Mr. Koji Omi discussing the formation of OIS. And December last year, I was in uh, Okinawa for the first time to meet Bob to see uh, OIS as it was still then. And was, since then, there's a big change. Let me give my experience of Singapore. Now, we are a very young country. This is our fifth, 45th anniversary this year. I'll go through quite quickly in the interest of time. Now, I've been involved in economic development since 1986. So my responsibility of economic development since 1986 when I was on loan for the Defence Ministry was in charge of research, and that my responsibility covered from 86 to this day. Our economy last year, which went to a recession, a very mild recession comparative, is very diversified. The manufacturing sector during my time was about 25%, dropped to 18.2. It will recover to 25% this year. But you look at our economy, total trade is three times the size of our GDP. 86 was my uh, loan to the economic development, and uh, we have seen three crises, the Asian financial crisis, the SARS crisis, and last year's uh, global financial crisis. But throughout, we have continued to grow. Last year, economy went down by 1.2%. This year, economy will recover by 14.9%. Now, I have been involved in four sectors uh, since I was in doing responsibility to economic development. One in the electronics, in the chemicals, precision engineering, and biomedical science. These are the four clusters I thought of relevance and most important of focus on the biomedical. Now, in every industry, there's always a growth, build up, and then eventually a decline. And you must therefore never put all your eggs in one cluster. I'll give an example of Singapore. The semiconductor industry went to the same phase. In fact, what I do is every five years from 1986, I look for a new sector to build up and let it grow, and then I move on to the next sector. The chemical sector started in 1995, by 2000 was ready, then they decided to move to the biomedical. For, now Singapore, unlike Okinawa, has very, very small piece of land. We are one-third the size of Tokyo with a population of almost uh, one-third of Tokyo. So for certain industries, for example, in the chemical industry, in the biomedical industry, I have to create land. So in 1995, I gave the government a plan to reclaim land of 3,000 hectares, 3,400 hectares, to spend $7 billion to reclaim. Today, it's up and ready, and we are possibly one of the largest petrochemical cup in the world, knowing that we have no markets, we have no oil, and no gas, and no land. The chemical industry has been sustained. Now, in 2001, uh, I decided to look at the biomedical 
or the industry that combines biology and science. And since then, it's fairly young. I think we are still a long way to go. We are possibly the first five, 10 years. This will take another 10 to 15 years. Again, for the biomedical industry, for the manufacturing component, I have to reclaim land. So I reclaim 360 hectares land just for the biomedical industry, away from every other sector. Unlike Okinawa, you don't have to worry about land. <laughs> fact, we have amber in that. The biomedical industry, unlike the previous industry, which is data storage, semiconductor chemicals, those are physical science and engineering. In the biomedical sciences industry, it is actually biology plus medicine plus healthcare. So I took over responsibility of research in 2001, in addition to my economic development job to restructure the economy. So this is the only industry, I believe, that takes from the bench to the bedside. The only industry that really takes care of uh, discovery and health care of people. So when I started effort in 2000, I took three doctors to help me. Professor Tan, who is now the president of National University, but John Wong, who is the dean of the medical school now, and Professor Kong, who was now in private practice, and all three of them, Professor uh, Tan is a nephrologist, Professor John Wong is an oncologist, he spent eight years in Sloan Catering, Professor Kong Wai Lung spent two years in Columbia, Panel Medical School doing cancer research. So I started not with engineers, but basically three doctors, and I'm an engineer by training. So I came up with the idea to build a cluster that if you really want to create, you need to create an environment. So this physical facility today, it covers housing, biomedical sciences, and research facilities all in one place. It's 200 hectares of land, and it will take time. Today, we are almost completed phase two. Uh, phase three is under construction. You can see there, there's room for a specialty hospital in the green area. But you notice we keep a lot of green. Unlike uh, other countries, greenery is very important to us. So the biomedical sciences really started from 2001. Uh, obviously, the oldest is the uh, uh, proteons. Each institute has about 250. The largest is uh, molecular and cell biology has about 600. But each institute has one director, has own budget for five years, and we build up from scratch. So you look at it, in 1887, 89, uh, Dr. C. Brenner came to Singapore in 85. I was then in the Defense Ministry, and we built up the Institute for Molecular and Cell Biology. But really, everything started from a, now this is physical sciences, just go back. The physical sciences are important to biomedical sciences because they provide the continuum. Uh, what we have done, sorry, maybe I jump. Okay, it's okay. Now, what we have done in 2006, we have to focus on translation and clinical. So you will look through that effort. Now, this industry requires three components, bench research, academic research, hospitals, and industry. It's a unique combination which we are able to coordinate. I was the chairman of the committee that handled all three of them. And the portfolio approach is, is ongoing. I will not go through the details. Basically, you need public-private and academic uh, partnership. But there's also translation. The hospitals are very important in biomedical science. You have to bring drugs uh, to the patient. It's not just a, the bench in the factory. Now, for the physical sciences, it's an important component, especially in medical devices, in uh, other areas of technology. We built a brand new facility. My office is here now. This architecture was done by Miros Kurokawa, son of Japan, who unfortunately passed away before we opened the facility. I invited 